Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host Stan Rattan and this is a blue collar wine show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We are going to talk about Malbec and we're going to talk about Malbec that comes from somewhere other than Argentina. We're talking about Coles, which is a region in southwest France about a hundred miles east of Bordeaux and it's considered really the birthplace of Malbec. They also do some Tanat down there as well. Um, very interesting site. It's uh, located kind of by the Mediterranean, kind of by the, it has an Atlantic influence, Mediterranean influence, a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, continental influence. So there's all these different climates in this region. Uh, Cahors, as they say, we might say Cahors, because that's what it looks like. But they kind of, you know, it's French, so it's Cal, Cal. I believe that's how they say it. This area has kind of two sections. One is the plateau of limestone, known as the coast. And then the other part where they grow grapes is on the gravelly slopes from the coast down to the Lot River, which the Lot River ends up flowing into the Gironde in Bordeaux. So there you have it. Now the ones that are, the vines that are grown on this plateau called the coast tend to be more tannic age-worthy wines, whereas the ones on this gravelly slopes going down to the Lot River are more are fruity, more approachable types of Malbec. Now this Malbec that comes from this region is not for everybody. If you're looking for, a, especially the ones grown on the uh, Co Plateau, uh, they're more tannic strong, but for those of you who like really old world wines, you really dig in those wines, these are the type of Malbec you may want. Uh, of course, everybody kind of now associates Malbec with Argentina. I understand that. But these will be fun to try. I'm looking forward to it. And we're going to get started right away with the Pigmentum from uh, Georges Vigoro. Vigoro, Vigoro, Vigoro. Uh, this rolls in at uh, this 2018, and it rolls in at 11 bucks. It's a screw cap, as you can see. So there you go, $11. Malbec from Southwest France. Give it a little rinse. Good color on these bad boys, I'm telling you. I'll show you here in just a second. It's just stain in the glass. They also refer to Malbec in this region as Co. C O T, you might want to say cot, but it's Co. So, really, really dark color on this baby. Let's see what we get on the nose. Kind of a cedar smell. Get a little black raspberry. Definitely some violets and, and red flowers. I also coming to mind is plum. Very expressive on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Definitely plums, red flowers, tiny hit of cherries. But what I like about this wine, again, we're talking the difference between Malbec from uh, Coase versus Malbec from Argentina. This has a ton of minerality. Feels like I just put a bunch of rocks on it and I suck them and spit them out. That's what it tastes like. A little raspberry coming through, plum, a little bit of cherry, red flowers, and a whole boatload of dusty rocks. The red flowers really hit on the mid palate and just a tiny kiss of tobacco and licorice coming through and then it finishes off with that kind of riverbed rock, that dusty rock, that gravel on the finish. Now it's not offensive but not for everybody. I would have to have to a lot, have to ask my customer a lot of questions before I sold them this wine. But it is kind of a cool transition wine if you're trying to introduce somebody into old world style Malbec. Love that kind of high tone on the mid palate. Good integration of fruit, 
minerality and acidity. I like this wine for $11. If you're willing to try something old world, something a little different. Now we all think we know Malbec, of course, from Argentina, but if you want to try Malbec from Southwest France, go, go. Try this one. Nice little French Malbec. I'm going to go B, straight up B on this. I think it's well made. Very solid expression of old world Malbec or Co. Let's move on to the Domaine Calmette Trepoy, Trey Pots Malbec. Co. Co. <laughs> I have a hard time with that one. 2017 rolls in at $25. So we jump from 11 to 25. Let's hope the wine jumps that far. <laughs> Again, 25 bucks, not chump change. 11 bucks, kind of more approachable, but let's see what we get on this one. Again, the color on this is wild, dark, very dark. Again, I hope you can see that. It is, you know, yeah, I can't see through it at all. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a meatier nose to it, like. You know, like a little bloody meat, you know, that steak before you put it on the grill. I get blackberry of plum on this one. More blackberry. I'm not getting as many red flowers. A little stink action, barely, barely underneath. I'm only getting the cedar notes on this one as well. And just a splash, there's a touch of plum but more uh, on the blackberry side to me. But I really like those cedar tones that come through on this one. I really like that. Let's see what we get on the palette. Very meaty. Very meaty texture. The tannins are, have that kind of meat element to them. Blackberries and plums. Good acidity. Almost mouth-watering. But nicely balanced. Well integrated into the fruit. Not as much of the minerality on this one as the other one. The cedar tones are on this one as well, from front to finish. In fact, it feels like I've maybe sucked on a cedar, something cedar. It's really prominent on the finish with the uh, acidity and then some red flower notes, which I didn't get as much on the nose, if at all. Maybe slightly. Are coming out on the finish, which is real interesting. This is, believe it or not, a more approachable style than the other one, which kind of surprised me because it's 11 bucks, it's 25. You know, you get the picture. I'm loving this wine. Solid, nice cedar tones. The uh, blackberry fruit comes through. A little bit of underripe blackberry with the ripe blackberries. A little touch of plum. Red flowers on the finish with the cedar. Very nicely made wine. You can see the difference. This has that lighter style. This has a meatier tannins to it. You know, I don't know where, they don't really tell you exactly where they grow this, but this could be on that uh, coast plateau, or this might be on the gravelly kind of, you know, going into the Lot River. I don't know. It didn't say too much on the website about these. But I'm going to go B plus on this one. I like it a little better than this one. I know it's more money, but it certainly is wine that I think most of us, even New World wine drinkers, could appreciate a little bit more. You know, the gravel, the rocks on this one, more for this old world wine geeks, you know. There's a lot of, a lot of you guys out there. I know that. You would love this. But this is definitely one that I think, you know, a New World palate might, you know, might be more uh, approachable for them. There you go. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I really appreciate it. Don't forget. Don't forget.
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. You know, and spread it around. Tell people about this wine program. I think they're educational, they're fun, and, you know, you get to understand whether you should spend $25 on this. Should you spend 11 bucks on that? That's the reason I do these. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.